Hey guys, this is a design video, but first let me give you the backstory of this one. I just recently had a chance to build an awesome RC car with my nephew, and it was a Tamiya TT02 all-wheel drive chassis kit. I know it's an awesome car because I already have one that I built a few years back, and with just a couple simple upgrades, I had a really fast car. Now, my version was the Martini Porsche edition, and I literally ran the tires off that car twice. And now that I have a racing buddy, I got to get this thing running again. But I ran into a problem at my first tire change. This car came with some really tough looking but non-standard wider rear wheels and tires and had a very difficult time finding them. And now from what I've read online, Tamiya had actually discontinued this tire set. And the standard size, while it rolls, when it just looks wimpy. So I'm done with this. I have 3D printers and a few 3D modeling skills, and that's what this video is going to be about. But there's a twist. I'm not going to 3D print these tires. I'm going to create a mold to make my own because I want really grippy, rubber-like tires. I know what this car is going to try to do to them. I've printed tires with flexible filament before, and I even still have a roll, but I think the sure hardness of that roll is just a little too hard. And so I want to try it this way. Now, this will be a first for me, so stay tuned. Let's find out if this is easy or a complete disaster. Let's get started. The software I'm going to be modeling in is called Plasticity, and since my discovery of it last year, it became my favorite tool for this kind of modeling. It's fast, powerful, easy to learn. In fact, I modeled this jet in the first week of using it, and it's far, far, far cheaper than it should be considering the professional level tool set. There's also a free one month trial. Check out the link in my description. And if you like it as much as I do, you can use my affiliate discount code REDBARON for a further 10% off. So download the free trial and follow along with me. We're gonna start this off by creating a profile of both the rim and the tire. And what you're looking at here, notice this red axis line, blue, green, and red. Ultimately, we're going to orbit this around those points but you have to create the profile first, which is quite simple. Here's the tire profile, and here's the rim profile. So I'm just going to very quickly use this tool set over here to show you how I did this. The whole point of this was that I wanted a 32 millimeter wide tire. I'm just gonna reference off the one I've already done. I'm gonna hit tab and say 32, and then come back down here. Now I'm happy with that. Now if I go to the one, can, one or point selection mode, I could touch on this point and this point and hit B. And if I go one direction, it creates a beautiful fillet. So let's do that. And since we've already created this, I'm just going to steal it now. Hit Shift D. And I'm going to move a copy of it over and up to about right there. Now I can hit F for location. And I'm going to hover over where I'm going to want to snap this thing to. So I like that. I'm going to sh type Shift A, which is the same as doing a line command here, right at the center. And now I'm going to delete what I don't want. So I'm going to hit T for trim, 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 trim. And honestly, we're just going to trim that right there. And the rest of this, I'm just going to circle and hit X for delete. I can keep that line now, but it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to touch on this and this and hit J for join. And now that it's all one thing, I'm going to hit O for offset. And I'm going to bring this down thickness of what I want that rim to be. About right there. Looks like 1.9 millimeters. Let's just make it two. Shift A. Bring this up. I'm going to do a circle from the center to the ends. I'm going to use the T for trim command. To knock that off. And now you can see how I got the shape of the rim that I wanted to use. The same methods were created to do the tire. We did lines up, lines over. Let me highlight all of this and I'm going to hit Alt X for duplicate. Use this gizmo to throw it over to the other side. Again do this, Alt X. Now I think I hit trim command and then I came over here and used a three-point arc. I touched here, here, and then somewhere out here. Then I again trimmed off what I didn't want. I joined the, these line sets together here, here, and here. 
And then with selection set to 1, I then touched on that endpoint, that endpoint, hit B for either chamfer or fillet, and I put a roundness on that tire. From there, I simply did an offset command to get the inside edge of that. And so this is how I created both tire profile and the rim profile. Selection on, I'm going to create the revolve tool and click two places on my axis line, create a complete revolution. So I do this for both the rim and the tire separately because we'll be modifying them differently. And then I'm going to go out to the web and I want to show you some pictures of what it is I'm trying to create the pretty bits, the scale bits of this Porsche wheel. And it looks just like that. So how do we get that? We're going to steal a picture and bring it in and create this profile right here. So I'm using a line tool or shift A and I'm going to create a vertical line from the center up. And then I'm going to think about where the lug bolt went here while well, I'm offsetting my hub. And I'm offsetting the outside edge of the rim because we'll use that in a minute. Now I'm going to circle. This is where the lug would have been. Creating another circle tangent down to the hub. Now I've decided to move it. Now I'm going to bring a line up from the edge. Make it tangent this time. Selection mode to 1. And I'm going to use the command extend curve. Stretch that out to the outside edge. And now I will use Alt-X to mirror that to the other side. Now I'm simply doing some cleanup. Now I'm creating the top little triangular piece, mirroring those over. I'm going to trim up areas that I don't want. And then with Selection 2, I'm going to hit the Join command. Then Selection 1, I can now fillet those edges. Trimming up the geometry on the lower portion of this. Now let's array it. And I'm going to have it arrayed five times. Here I'm basically going to do all over again on the raised section of the rim what we did for the hole. We're joining these together. And then with the point selection, I'm going to choose B and I'm going to put a fillet on there. So if I planned this ahead, I could have uh, done then this all in one array, but I didn't. So I'm cleaning up this very well. So I'm deleting geometry now I'm that I don't want. The, uh, the curve and I'm going to array this array it five times to the center point in the position with five for this whole thing. Uh, repetitions. And then again, clean up the trash I don't want. And that's pretty much it for the profiles to create this. Okay, let's start making something. Go to face mode here and we're going to extrude. A flat section right here. Good. Now the center rim I'm going to extrude out. I'll change this later. And then these raised sections I'm going to extrude. And then I'm going to rotate the face of it just a little bit. as You see me doing here. And then moving it back in. Now I'm going to subdivide this space. And then with point selection on, I'm going to grab some middle points and use G. So I'm introducing a warp here in this part. Just a little bit. Now with edge selection on, I'm going to grab the boundaries of this. And simply grab that little gizmo right there. And as I pull away, it's going to allow me to fillet this on all edges. And now it's time to array this. Again, five points. I'm going to snap to the center. And five points this time are up. There we go. Now I'm going to move this center hub in randomly where I think I want it. Wait, let's fix the back first. So face mode, I'm going to grab this back face and holding my control key down, touch the adjacent face. And then touch both and J for join. And now I can move it in. But on the back side of this, I want it to have some curvature. So I'm creating a sphere here. And then I'll move it in. Hide the objects I don't want. And now I want to do a Boolean operation. And it dishes the back of that piece out. Now we'll work on the lugs here. I did a circle, and then I should have used a face, but I used an edge. 
So I use a patch holes command to put a face on this. And then I'm going to create a polygon. Now, if you hold your shift key down and spin your wheel, you'll be able to change the numbers of sides. And now I'm extruding it out to make it look like a bolt. Then I'm creating a sphere here, B for new body. And I want to Boolean intersect these so that I get that cool rounded edge that you'll see on many bolts. And then I'm going to join these, but I can't Boolean it because the other was a face. So we're going to do this again, patch on the back. And now QQ, and you've got a solid lug. And now I'm going to array it around. Now let's work on the tire and the treads. So I'm going to split this tire up into a few sections here. The center section I want to be completely a slick. So I'm drawing a couple small lines and then I'm going to mirror them right here. And then I will cut this tire into each of these sections. And now, using the face command, I will touch these two center ones and simply drag it in. And now here is a shape that I created my tread from. I'm going to subtract the tire from it and then move that tread in ever so slightly. And then I'm going to remove from that tread pattern the section that I don't want. Now I'm going to use the array command. Finding that center point, I'm going to decide how many times this needs to array around to look like convincing tread pattern. So there you go. That's done. And now I'm mirroring it to the other side. And we will now use the Q Boolean subtract tool. And I'm going to subtract all of these threads from the actual tire. And there you have your tread pattern. So let's just do that on the other side then. And there you have it. Now it's just a matter of putting it back together. Let's see how this looks with some material on it. I'm going to create a dark color. And realized I hadn't unioned these, so I'm going to put it all back together. Now I have a dark plastic tire. And I'm going to change some of the settings to soften this up in the materials just a little bit. This isn't even in all that important. I just wanted you to see these tools. And now it kind of looks a little bit more like a real tire. So I'm happy with the rim, and I'm happy with the tire, but remember, we're going to make a mold of this, right? So here's a circle I'm going to extrude across the entire thing. It's in two parts, and so the first part I'm going to Boolean subtract the tire from. Turn everything back on. Hide the other side, Boolean subtract again. And then I want a circle on the innermost edge of this tire. I'm going to hide the tire now and create an extrusion all the way through what's going to be my mold. Now I'm joining the two mold halves together. Then I'm going to Boolean subtract the center section out. Hiding what I don't want to see. Hiding the rim deleting a piece of the inner core and now hiding the tire and now you can see the female mold that I'm going to use for the tire. But let's make a squeegee so that we can squeegee the material into this mold. I did a line and extruded it to a face. Then I'm going to thicken it. Well, first I'm going to subtract the tire from it and I'm going to subtract the mold from it. And I'm going to thicken it. It's about, I think, three millimeters. Really, whatever works here. 
And then I'll continue to remove the pieces that I don't want. You'll see me move this down. Move this in. And then I realized I need this to be symmetrical, so I'm just going to delete the one side of it, and I'm going to mirror this over. And then this gives me an opportunity to move the face of the mold so that now I know that the mold is symmetrical. Now I don't need these so deep, I'll push these up, and so this will end up being my squeegee to squeegee the material around on the inside of this tire. And I'm splitting the mold into two parts, and I'll ultimately when um, I'm putting this together, they'll just be taped on the outside edge while the mold is setting up. And then they'll be untaped so that two halves can be removed away from the mold. And so that's it. Okay, so that's it for designing. Here I have one piece of it highlighted. I'm going to go up here, File, Export. I'm going to choose STL, and it's going to be called Wheel Mold. I'm going to hit Save. And then up here, I want to make sure my density is as high as I can get it. I went through all the pain of getting all this detail in here. I want it to show up in the STL. So got that set up. I'm just going to hit OK. It's going to write out an STL file. So I'm going to FDM print the actual uh, wheels. But I'm going to resin print the molds for the tires because I want to see if we can't get this with zero layer lines. All right, guys, I'm off to print these tires and wheels. Uh, if you like this, please like and subscribe, and you'll be able to see if this was a disaster or a success. And also, don't forget, if you are interested in the software for the free trial, check the link below, and also my 10% discount code, Red Baron. Thanks, guys.